Alright fellas, today I'm going to do a how-to on 300 Blackout. Some of my older videos, I used the Hornady Case Prep Center to cut the 223 grass down all the way to your 300 Blackout. Well, I finally got the Arbor Freight 2 inch bent bench chop bench top chop saw, excuse me, which this being recent I guess Arbor Freight has discontinued the saw so I looked that looked up on Amazon and was able to get a pretty much the exact same model for slightly more I think I spent forty six dollars and this is the exact same one that Arbor Freight has or used to have rather although instead of being all black it's got some orange on there but steer clear of the cheaper versions because the motor pulls down really really bad the Arbor Freight style doesn't so got online also bought the jig to put on the saw and it's it's got a little check ball in there spring loaded very easy to operate and you can I'm, I'm averaging about 85 rounds per 10 minutes and then I stop and clean up my mess you see I've got plenty of brass clippings and everything else laying around but go through a couple hundred of those and then at that point straight wall case and this is straight out of the saw I haven't done any sizing trimming anything so it cuts very clean and from there I will deprime resize and trim down to minimum and when I'm finished I end up with plenty of 300 blackout now I'm not actually going to cut any down today I just wanted to do a tutorial on the whole process because when I look on YouTube I don't see any so I've ran you through the whole cutting stage and everything else I'll take you over and I'll show you my setup and how I get everything down to minimum and run every piece of brass with virtual ease I've got as you've seen maybe in some other other videos I've got a Hornady case prep center which I absolutely love and I've got some 556 five, brass here I'll just show you I mean it runs exceptionally well when you're doing brass in mass quantities granted it's nowhere near as fast as your Dillon power case trimmers or anything like that but you still manage to crank out some rounds for multiple cartridge sizes as well as calibers and this is slightly easier to do with two hands but I mean And that's how easy the process is. So if you can fathom the idea of having that set up for 300 blackout, after you run your case through your sizing die, you can very easily trim that case to minimum and you're not sitting there with a cordless drill or your power case trimmers from Lyman or RCBS or anything like that, or running that hand crank. So you can move quite a bit more brass through your process a lot faster and I don't know that it makes any difference but with any other semi-automatic round that I've ever loaded you typically have to have small base dies well I'm running full length dies for 300 blackout as you can see there and I don't have any chambering issues I've actually gone as far as not crimping some of them just to see how well the chamber is on my gun and I don't have any issues with bullet dislodge or anything like that but I have got a Lee factory crimp die to take care of that I figure eventually my luck will run out but here's my setup 
After I cut all the cases down, I'll go ahead and tumble them, deprime, resize, trim. Of course, I use Hornady one shot case lube, hence the gallon Ziploc bag. The easiest sizing lubricant I have found on the market to date. And then I sonic clean. Maybe not a necessary step, but in my opinion, needed. It tends to get the powder residue and build up out of the case. And I just like a lot of shiny brass. You know, anybody that's been reloading for a while will tell you just because you have a lot of shiny brass doesn't necessarily mean that it's a good thing or a bad thing. But. I just like that look. And when you compare it to new rounds, that's all commercial PMC. And this is all primed and ready for gunpowder and bullet. As for brass, I typically try to stick with military surplus brass. It's cheap, and that's the main reason why. But for 300 blackout, let's see if I can find a better one in here. They are heavily annealed. So I don't know, yeah, you can kind of see the annealing there. And that's the case that I cut down. Your commercial brass isn't as heavily annealed, so therefore it tends to be slightly harder. This is a Remington case here. And you can tell on Remington 223, you virtually have no annealing line. Whereas on Lake City, well, you can barely see it right here. And it just makes the brass easier to process, easier to work out. But if you have any questions, I'm relatively new to the 300 blackout case. I've only actually had the gun finished and in firing order for about a month and a half now. So, I don't have a whole lot of cases worked up. Although, I do have plenty of 556 as well as 762 and a few other oddballs here and there that I reload for. So if you have any reloading questions on the 300 blackout, please post them in the comment section and I will do my best to reply as soon as possible. So there you have it. It's not that time consuming but if you just like with any other reloading if you take your time it's rather enjoyable and you can crank out some rounds in decent fashion. Hope you enjoyed the tutorial and as always have a nice day.